Okay, itong nakaraang uh, linggo, uh, something uh, sad uh, uh, transpired, uh, uh, and that is uh, our friend uh, and uh, comrade in the uh, struggle to bring out the truth uh, about the uh, Hocus Picos and Smartmatic. Uh, si Ginoong uh, June Estrella passed away at the age of 74. Uh, June Estrella uh, was uh, with the uh, different groups that uh, worked very hard to uh, defy the propaganda of Comelec and Smartmatic uh, and uh, tell the truth uh, about the manipulation uh, of the uh, elections of 2010 and 2013. Uh, at that time, when we were starting to uh, raise the issue, uh, it was not easy. Uh, but June Australia was one of the pioneers in this struggle. Uh, and uh, he, along with the others like Toti Casino of GNN, uh, with the uh, groups uh, of UP and uh, Ateneo, the uh, computer experts, uh, the uh, NGOs like Senpeg, and individuals like Ado Pagdinawan of uh, Solidarity for uh, Sovereignty, who is with us uh, to discuss this today. Uh, we succeeded. And today, by today, maramit na pong nakakaunawa kung anong uh, kababalaghan ang pinagagawa nitong Picos Machine, kung anong pandarambong ng ginagawa ng mga COMELEC uh, commissioners ng mga nakaraan hanggang sa kasalukuyan, kung hindi po nila tigilan yung pinagagawa nila. Uh, at uh, yung uh, mga media natin uh, na bibili, na babayaran para uh, pagtakpan ang katotohanan na ito. Ay, nagtagumpay po tayo at marami nang nakakaunawa, marami nang nagre-reject ng uh, computerized election and ang panawagan para sa back to manual ay uh, lumalakas ng lumalakas. But uh, June Australia will not enjoy the final day where we go back to manual elections at the precinct level uh, at the very least. You know, because he moved on. But I sure, I'm sure he wouldn't mind kasi nga uh, nung nakita naman niya bago siya nagpaalam na nagtatagumpay na itong uh, laban na to. And uh, so I will ask uh, Ado to say a few words also for June Australia and then we will proceed to get an update on itong nangyayari sa uh, laban sa uh, electronic uh, voting and elections. Ado? Yeah, uh, well I met June Australia in 1990 right after the uh, 1989 coup d'etat. Mm. I came back to the Philippines. Uh, we had our share of quelling the coup d'etat from the Washington, D.C. Philippine Embassy office. And... Uh, Anong role ni June Australia doon? Uh, in the embassy, wala naman. Wala naman. Uh, nung umuwi lang ako dito following that, uh, I met him because we were corresponding with uh, the class of 1962, PMA. PMA. He was a PMA, but uh, he didn't finish it, no? He yeah, he on. didn't finish it. He, <laughs> in fact, on a, on a naughty note, he was uh, expelled from the PMA ah. for hazing. Ah, okay, okay. And that's the irony of things. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the brightest uh, product of our uh, recent history. Uh, in terms of uh, democracy and patriotism. Uh, I recall that he worked with uh, Alejandro Melchor. Yes, he was. Uh, th that was one of the um, um, commonalities uh, that we struck because I worked for a while with uh, Rafael Salas, and um, he worked also for uh, uh, Alex Melchor. And so the 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 level of, uh, what, what combined was the the desire and level of exceptionalism in governance that both of us understood very well because of our mentors, mm -hmm. my mentor Salas and his mentor Melchor. And um, during that turn in uh, 1990, um, we were forming um, a consortium for to to bring into the Philippines uh, the satellite receiving technology for Landsat 6 spot ano, anong year yan? Anong year yan? 1990 okay uh, Landsat 6 uh, the spot of the French Landsat is of course for the US 
and the Tiro satellite for uh, weather mm -hmm. from Japan. And we were coming up with a very big satellite receiving station on top of a mountain in Iloilo. And that's when I, I met him and we were discussing all this, uh, the, the, the drawing boards and all that stuff. We eventually, uh, I, I eventually got the funding from this from the Sultan of Brunei, $100 million. At that time? At that time. Probably a billion now. Yeah, but uh, why is it not in existence? And June uh, was so frustrated about it because he was one of the uh, computer experts who was in the project together with uh, 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 the members of uh, Class of 62, of PMA. And uh, uh, the reason was uh, the check was given to Cory Aquino, mm -hmm. but Cory Aquino used the money for budgetary purposes, for the salaries, uh, gladly for the salaries of our, of our teachers, of government employees and all that, and also the budget to run our government. But uh, the negative side of it is we cannot enjoy the, the luxury of having such a, a state-of-the-art technology. Well, uh, just a point uh, there about the dislocation, financial dislocation after the fall of Marcos and yes. took over. Mm -hmm. no? So, yan ang isang presyo. This is one of the prices yeah. structured by the foreign power, yes. ano, including the looting of our gold, yes. which today we don't know. Uh, where, uh, the gold, where those things gold, are, no? yeah. where those things are. Yeah. Uh, so those uh, dreamy-eyed boy, boys who still and girls who still believe in Ed Sawan, yeah. I wish they would study it uh, with more uh, depth. You know what happened there? I, I will consider it the second uh, ravaging of our economy. Uh, the first was uh, the first Coco Levy was the one that was propping up the Commonwealth uh, reign uh, during the Commonwealth the, period. During the oh. Commonwealth. Uh, but we never got back that, that money. Yeah. Uh, it is not true that it was Marcos who first levied coconut. Mm. The coconut levy was very original in uh, Manuel El Queso. Mm. And the second was uh, during the fall of Marcos, mm. where not only were a lot of things missing in the international economic uh, capability of the Philippines, but also the fact that nobody was paying taxes, the economy was down, income was just nowhere to be found. And so we need this wherewithal for, uh, to finance our, uh, our own uh, government system. Well, the coconut levy, by the way, is something we will be scheduling for discussion here maybe two, three weeks from now after uh, Holy Week. No? Okay. Uh, because uh, malaking effort ang ginagawa to privatize it. Yes. So, sunggabit na naman ito, nila Purisima <laughs> sa finance naman. Yeah. Yung Purisima yeah, uh, doon sa polis, oh. ano, ay pumalpak. <coughs> Dito naman sa Purisima sa finance, gustong sunggabin for mm. the financial mafia itong coconut levy. But we'll discuss that when the time comes. Huh? When, uh, in, when Corey's term ended, we met again sometime in 93. Uh, and I was surprised because he was made an honorary member of PMA. And I was also made uh, something like that. Mm. <laughs> uh, I so, don't know what they call it. So, makikita natin kung gano'ng kahalaga itong si Ginoong June Estrella sa kasaysayan natin. Ngunit yeah. walang nakakakilala sa kanya. Yeah. Uh, even during this campaign against the Smartmatic because machine, eh, medyo nasa background siya. Yeah. But uh, naimbita natin paminsan-minsan mm. to discuss, no? Dahil... He's one of those competent to discuss computers and information technology. June was uh, one of the first pioneers in information technology in this country. Uh, he graduated from Mapua Institute of Technology and was uh, with IBM for the longest time. And that's where he, he nurtured his uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. um, the third time I would, why do I be? Because I, I live in the U.S. and I would come back and forth. And the third time that uh, we really worked together was uh, basically after the 2004 elections, mm -hmm. when uh, June Australia rose to his peak, uh, questioning the 2004 elections. And uh, that, that also created the Hilo Garcia, if you remember, and also the count, uh, because in that election, uh, the theory was Fernando Poe Jr. won. Mm -hmm. And my association with him for, since 2004, just grew and grew and grew. Uh, we were together in the 2007 again, um, uh, monitoring elections and comparing notes. But grew very tightly together, working together really almost uh, weekly we would meet. 
uh, following the 2010 elections and on to the 2013 elections. Yeah, where uh, basically I, I was the one who spotted the 60-30-10 uh, uh, pattern of short stopping the votes. Uh, and this was we, what we were talking in his deathbed mm. at the Manila Sanitarium. He, he, was, he, he gave me a big smile. He said, my goodness, that was a stroke of, uh, mm. of uh, genius in naming, in, in calling, yeah. and in the language that the layman could understand, mm. that what the Comelec was doing was short-stopping the votes, meaning the votes that would come from the, uh, from the people's Which votes would be uh, defaulted in favor of a pre-program. Harangin, harangin. Oh. Yeah. Tapos ipapasok oh. sa isang uh, algorithm. <coughs> yeah, uh, kasi uh, once meron ang nakapasok doon sa designated present na yon, yung boto ng tao, wala na, madi-default na. Mm. Hindi na tatanggapin yung sistema. Mm. And so, uh, I likened it to a baseball shortstop. And, uh, hindi, nakaka, hindi kami nakakaintindi ng baseball dito eh. Kaya <laughs> in basketball terms, dapat ang aning mo. Oh, well, uh, ini slam dunk nila. Mm. <laughs> ini slam dunk nila. And uh, a foul is not being called. Mm. <laughs> so that's the closest analogy to basketball. So nag-barging uh, in sila para mag-slam dunk. Yeah. Yung barging in, yung foul, oh, hindi kinocall. Kino kaya ang counted yung slam dunk mm. uh, may offensive foul. Mm. So, um, I, I uh, posted it in the email at 3 o'clock in the morning of uh, May 14. Uh, in, the, in the waking up at about 6 to 7, I got an email back when I woke up. I saw an email from Ernie Del Rosario. And he said that he, he, he took note and he agreed with me. And he was passing on the observation Sino to... Sino si Ernie Del Rosario? He's a computer... Computer, uh, another expert. computer uh, expert. Ateneo or UP? I think it's uh, with the UP group, UP. with the UP Senpeg. Uh, that he was passing... We, we didn't know each other. <laughs> we were corresponding by email. But he said he was passing in the information, the lead, to uh, one Lex Buga mm -hmm. at the Ateneo. Uh, and it was eventually Lex Muga contacting us back and I told them I don't want to be prominent because uh, I might be uh, perceived as a biased source. But an uh, uh, independent professor from the Ateneo de Manila University would be uh, more objectively received by the people. And so Lex Muga ran away with it. We eventually also organized after that a think tank with Toti Casino, uh, of course with June Australia as mm -hmm. the chairman, uh, Toti Casino. We, Lex Muga would correspond. He would not come to the meetings, but he would, we would feed him the developments and he would contribute by email. Uh, so there was Toti Casino, June Australia, and we had legal, and for legal we got Malchor Magdamo and uh, Rodolfo Reyes, uh, Inky Reyes. Okay, yeah. okay uh, by the way, itong uh, discussion natin, dapat nandito yung daughter, no? but uh, yeah. it's a hitch somewhere. Uh, at uh, dadalhin sana yung mga video at uh, previous uh, interviews ni June Estrella dito and so on. But unfortunately, uh, because of the final days of the uh, wake, uh, hindi makarating uh, si Hilda uh, Estrella, the mm -hmm. daughter of June. So, okay, now, let's move on. Ngayon, lumalabas sa mga, na sa mga balita, baka itong Smartmatic eh, mapigilan ng Korte Suprema. Yeah, and, TRO uh, has been issued. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yung posibilidad na mabalik sa manual mm -hmm. uh, voting sa presinto yes. and maybe electronic uh, transmission uh, and different variations such as those proposed by former COMELEC uh, Commissioner uh, Lagman, no? Yes. Uh, Gas Lagman. Mukhang uh, maaring mangyari na na mabalik sa manual election. Ano bang latest dito? Well, uh, the Supreme Court uh, issued a temporary restraining order for the... Uh, contract that uh, Sixto Brillantes on his day of, uh, of retirement signed. And, and Which that's is again a, an act that is uh, suspicious, no? Yeah, because... Pinirman ang kontrata on the day of uh, retirement. Hindi lang yun. Uh, yung kontrata ang pinirmahan niya is not born out of any bidding process. Yeah, yeah. That's one. Number and so, kinikriticize pa niya Supreme Court. Bakit daw ongoing na itong contract na ito? The contract is being implemented yeah. by Comelec. Eh, ngayon pa daw, siya sabi niya, parang mute ng academic. 
But the thing is, uh, what the Supreme Court did here is that there's an ongoing crime going on. And so they have to prevent the continuation of an ongoing crime. Now, why, this, why is this a crime? Because the, uh, the award, as I said, uh, was not born out of uh, uh, a bidding session. It was just uh, sheer favoritism on the part of uh, Sixto Brillantes, which we could not understand that up to now, these people at the Comelec cannot understand uh, why uh, Smartmatic, who delivered to us a bogus election in 2010 and a bogus election in 2013, will be made to uh, repair and refurbish whatever is the defect in their system. Masyado nang ridiculous. Uh, and absurd, no? Na hindi pa rin nila naiintindihan. So, people are uh, calling uh, the deal a midnight deal, no? Mm -hmm. uh, on the part of the former uh, chairman of yeah, uh, the Commission on Election. Year, no? in our, yes. In our program uh, previously. No? Now, uh, with this, uh, 80,000 machines are uh, not to be diagnosed, ba basically, uh, if, if this doesn't go through. And I would like to think that it won't go through, precisely because uh, you're running, you're, you're making the criminal run away with his crime and uh, possibly uh, covering up for the crime that he has committed in, in technical terms uh, uh, with, with the machines well, that we use in the two be, elections. Uh, this will be uh, mana from heaven, no? If we yeah. go back to manual, because yeah. Uh, maybe you can help me recall the instances where in Europe and other countries mm -hmm. they have uh, uh, finally rejected automated election and gone back to most of those one. most of those who have uh, changed to automation have gone back to uh, manual manual be precisely because um, of the lack of transparency once you put the thing uh, into the ballot into the machine that's the last thing you know of it Whereas in the manual before, uh, it, it, it's more like a fiesta because the people participate directly in the process. Mm. Uh, the teachers, mm. did, did you know, Mentong, uh, uh, that uh, they hire less teachers now? And they're saying that they're even saving money because they're hiring less teachers uh, without admitting that uh, the, the result is, uh, is not uh, transparent and uh, credible. Well, uh, uh, just to cite one country, Germany Supreme Court. Yes. I know this allowed the use of uh, automated elections. Yeah, they they nullified. Yeah, they, they nullified one election and they uh, went back to manual. Kaya nga kung minsan narinig ko dyan sa Kongreso, sa committee chairman and so on, like Rufus Rodriguez and the others, or sa Senate, uh, saying that, eh baka mabalik tayo sa manual election, parang masama. Oh, parang ano, tinatakot pa tayo. Oh, tinatakot pa. Hindi ko maintindihan, itong mga congressmen, Ito ang mga first line na magiging biktima ng continuous baka uh, fraud. Ang, baka silang nangbibiktima kasi. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but uh, I think it's more of anticipating again that their votes will be bought in order mm -hmm. to pass on something. Because itong 80,000 plus na machines na uh, subject nitong uh, diagnostics for 269 million diagnostics budget, uh, pag hindi ito ng diagnostics, Wala talaga. Hindi magagamit yung 80,000. And what would follow this if matuloy ito is a requisition for an additional of 25,000 machines. So this is all uh, another big uh, budget item coming. And marami na naman makikinabang dito no? uh, with, the, with the rate of uh, graft and corruption that's very prevalent in the B.S. Aquino administration. Uh, so Itong kakulangan ng makina, ang sabi ko nga noon kay James Jimenez, yung spokesman ng Comelec, is very simple. Because I was, uh, I was betting with him. Eh. Pustahan tayo, manual ang next election. Kung hindi manual, hindi magkaka-eleksyon, sabi ko. Uh, sabi niya, oh, paano naman mangyayari yun, sabi niya. Well, uh, as I'm telling a lot of people who are my friends, walang makina, walang automation. Mm -hmm. Uh, always there will be a manual election. The, for the, since 2010, the only uh, credible election that has happened in this country is the barangay elections that was conducted without the PICOS machines. Mm -hmm. 
And it was done in a manual manner. Wala tayong narinig na protesta. Walang protesta. Not a single, uh, <laughs> not a single negative criticism. Ang, uh, ang aking uh, reaction naman doon sa sinasabi na ayaw nila sa manual and so on dahil uh, ang tao ang aasahan na uh, magsulat, magbilang and so on. Those are human acts. Yes. That reaffirms our humanity and our civilized nature. Oh. Kaya, uh, kaya nga nagagalit ang mga tao is para bang nawala na yung participation nila. Mm. Kasi tingnan mo ha, nawala yung mga watchers. Ano pa ang role ng watchers sa automation? Nawala yung, uh, yung remember yung Manila paper nilalagay doon sa, sa, sa blackboard, tinatakpan. Tapos yan, taras-taras yan. Tinatali nila yung, yung uh, they call out the vote and then they put the vote there. Kita ng bayan, lahat. Yes. So we just have to add uh, some... Uh, revision siguro to the oh. system down there allow everybody to take pictures oh. ano, ngayon so, nga with the, with the with the cell phone mm. uh, pag nandiyan na yung taras anybody can take a picture mm. and he has a record mm. much yung mga balota eh, ano na eh, plus the ballots na may paper trail wala nang paper trail so hindi yan as a de democratic process precisely na ng precisely yung tao diyan sa yes. pagbantay mm. uh, sa pagmamasid yes ngayon, ang... Gusto nila tanggalin yan. Kami na lang, kami na lang. Yung makina na lang namin. Eh, eh sila na lang nakakaalam kung ano nangyari. Uh, I, I picture myself as ito yung makina. And then sa loob niyan, may tao eh, sa loob. May mga maliliit na tao sila. May mga maliliit na tao sa loob. Sila na nakakaalam kung ano nangyari. I mean, that's how, that's how uh, June Estrella, back to June Estrella, was, was, was telling me about it. Uh, on uh, this uh, kung saan nang galing yung mga manual manipulation. Ngayon, ang proposal ni Gas Lagman para maging hybrid naman is alisin na yung ladderized uh, process of uh, present to municipality to uh, provincial and then to national. Uh, bakit? Kasi pag nakuna na ng litrato yung ano at napadala na yon yung litrato na yon pwede nang yung can yung canvassing process yun ang i-automate yun ang i-automate okay pwedeng i-request na ang ating camera bumati muna kay John Simon doon kaya mga uh, yeah. kasi ka dapat kasama natin sa programa uh, sa diskusyon eh hindi na umabot dahil sa <laughs> sa traffic ano so ayun si uh, dating mayor ng Quezon City John Simon he'll be with us in future episodes ano? at least na na kita niyo ulit yung ating mayor ng Quezon City so, oh. sige, we have to wrap up ka, ado, ano, and uh, what should we say? What would you like to say about June Australia? I've said my piece. Ano. Yeah, uh, this country has uh, lost someone who has fought very hard for uh, good, honest, and transparent elections, whether it be manual in the past or automated uh, presently or back to the manual, it would seem, uh, that we would be missing June Australia in the monitoring for credible elections. Can, can we have one word from uh, Mayor June Simon? One word lang dito. Pan, pan ulit tayo ng camera. Uh, are you for manual election in the coming elections or computer pa? As sa tingin ko, yung pagbibilang kailangan uh, maging manual, no? Para yung mga tao, malaman na resulta sa kanilang presinto at sa kanilang mga eskwela. Dinig ba? Hindi. Hindi dinig eh. Sayang. Oh, anyway. We'll uh, invite June in our next episode. Mabuhay po tayo lahat. Maraming salamat. Yeah. Ka Rod and okay. uh, Thank Karen, you, ka Ado. And uh, may we have more June Australias in the coming uh, days and years. Mabuhay and have a good night.